we want to welcome you to the off-road Can-Am ATV world. Let us congratulate you on acquiring your new Can-Am off-road ATV. Now give us a few minutes of your attention and you'll be rewarded with the best possible riding experience and more ways to keep you, your family, and your friends safe off-road. I'm Hubert Rowan, everyone's favorite redneck from Nitro Circus. I'm Dustin Jones with S3 Power Sports. And I'm Zach Wilson, Can-Am product specialist. Now, this video contains important safety information. Take time to review it carefully before using your vehicle. Failure to do so may result in serious injury or even death. For this segment, we'll be talking about operator's requirements. Take note that it is also important to read and follow your operator's guide and always keep this on your vehicle at all times. We recommend taking a moment referring to the operator's guide when seated on the machine so you know where all of your controls are and how they work. You must be able to use these properly when needed. Before each ride, the operator and passenger should read and understand their respective safety labels to remind themselves important safety tips. BRP recommends that all riders ride the appropriate size ATV according to their age. But be aware, nobody of any age should ride an ATV if they're not responsible enough to ride properly. Parents need to be sure that young riders are mature enough to ride an ATV, receive proper training and instructions, and take an approved safety riding course. Young riders require parental permission and supervision from an adult. Before you go out for a ride, it's very important to familiarize yourself with the handling of your vehicle by practicing in a controlled setting. Each operator must be able to sit and have both feet on footrest and hands on the handlebar. You must avoid anything that impairs your own abilities. Such as drugs, fatigue, and alcohol. Drinking and driving do not mix. You know that, so don't do it. For this segment, we'll be talking about pre-ride inspection. It is very important that you inspect your vehicle before each ride to ensure that your vehicle is in good condition. Refer to the pre-ride inspection subsection of the operator's guide. This inspection monitors wear and deterioration before it causes problems. Your inspection should become a regular part of your preparation routine, just like checking the weather forecast. Correct any problems that you find and, if necessary, see an authorized Can-Am dealer. For this section, we'll be talking about the proper type of gear to wear while riding. Riding an open air vehicle like your Can-Am ATV requires wearing the proper protective gear. Protective gear keeps you safe and keeps you comfortable during riding in the elements. Recommended protective gear for the driver and passenger include, first of all, an approved helmet to protect your head and brain from injury. And next, eye protection to protect your eyes from flying debris. Also required, closed toe footwear, sturdy over the ankle boots with non-slip soles, which offer more protection and allow you to plant your foot properly on the footrest. Long pants that protect you from the elements like heat, sunburn, cold temperatures, branches, and bushes. Long sleeve shirt or jacket paired with full finger gloves that protect you against bad weather and protect your skin in case you're ejected from the vehicle. On long rides, it's a good idea to carry rain gear. A dry rider is a comfortable rider, and a comfortable rider is a happy rider. Let's go over a couple of things to consider while riding with a passenger. Do not carry a passenger under any circumstances on a one-up ATV. Also, never carry passengers in the cargo area. Double riding may impair the ability of the operator to shift weight going uphill, downhill, and around corners on an ATV not intended for two rider use. It's important to review and understand the information in this video and in the operator's guide before operating your Can-Am 2-Up ATV, especially with a passenger. It's just as important for a person who may become a passenger on your 2-Up ATV to watch this section carefully and review the safety labels to better understand and appreciate the safest way to be a participant on a two-up ride. Your passenger has to be capable of sitting upright while firmly placing his or her feet on the footboards and properly reach the passenger handholds to stay correctly positioned for proactive riding. The passenger must always hold on to the passenger grab handles and not the operator. If you are a novice or an untrained operator, you should not carry a passenger until you have sufficient experience in operating your two-up ATV. For this section, we'll be going over stability while riding. This vehicle handles differently from other vehicles. 
A rollover or tip over can occur quickly during abrupt maneuvers such as sharp turns or simply by side hilling or riding across steep hills or over obstacles. So don't assume that the vehicle will not tip or roll over. You must know the limits of your vehicle under different riding conditions. Do not attempt maneuvers that are risky for you, your passenger, or other bystanders. Now let's give you a rundown of some things to consider while turning. Turning is one of the most frequent causes of accidents. It's easier for the vehicle to lose traction or roll over if you turn too sharp or are going too fast. Slow down when you approach a turn. You will feel some lateral force pushing you towards the outside of the curve. You should shift your weight into the turn and accelerate only after you start coming out of the turn. The best way to shift your weight for turning is to move forward slightly and slide over to the side of the seat that is on the inside of the turn. Support your body weight on the inside footrest and lean into the turn. Pay attention to the vehicle. If your wheels start to slide or come off the ground, you need to slow down and make sure to turn wider. Instruct your passenger to watch the road, lean into curves, and brace. For this segment, we'll be talking about braking. Whether you're stopping slowly or you need to stop quick, you start by releasing the throttle and apply the front and rear brakes evenly at the same time. If the wheels lock, release the brakes briefly and then reapply again. Always keep in mind that braking distance is readily affected by, but not limited to, weather and terrain conditions, braking system and tire conditions, vehicle speed and attitude, and vehicle load, including towing. Remember to adjust your driving accordingly. Slow down before entering a turn. Avoid hard braking during a turn. Always keep both hands on handlebars and feet on foot pegs when braking. Now let's go over the proper use of your parking brake. Always use the parking brake and engage the park position on the shift lever when the vehicle is not in operation. This is especially important when parking on a slope. On very steep inclines or if the vehicle is carrying cargo, the wheels should be blocked using rocks or bricks. Before driving, make sure the parking brake is disengaged. If the parking brake is left on while riding, it may cause damage to the brake system and cause loss of braking capacity or even cause a fire. For this section, we'll be talking about operating in reverse. When operating in reverse, check that the path behind the vehicle is clear of people and obstacles. Proceed slowly and avoid sharp turns. We recommend sitting on the ATV when operating in reverse. Avoid standing up. Your weight could shift forward against the throttle lever, causing unexpected acceleration. Let's run down some things to consider when carrying cargo and pulling a trailer. The vehicle handling, stability, and braking distance are affected when loading racks and using the vehicle. So correct loading and weight distribution is very important. Never overload, tow, or carry cargo improperly. Always ensure the cargo is safely secured and properly distributed on the racks before operating the vehicle. Safely reduce your speed according to terrain conditions when carrying cargo and avoid hills and rough terrain. Be careful not to skid or slide. Always secure the cargo as low as possible on the racks to reduce the effect of higher center of gravity. Failure to follow the recommendations here could cause changes to the vehicle handling which could lead to an accident. Now let's discuss pulling a trailer. Reduce your speed when pulling a trailer and turn gradually. Avoid hills and rough terrain. Never attempt steep hills. Allow more distance for braking, especially on inclined surfaces and when a passenger on two up models is on board. Be careful not to skid or slide. Improperly loading a trailer may cause loss of control. Always put the shift lever to low range for hauling a trailer. Now let's cover some terrain conditions to consider. You should always avoid paved surfaces. Riding on paved surfaces may seriously affect handling and control of your vehicle. It may even cause sudden loss of control. If you must drive on pavement, turn gradually and go slowly. Driving on public roads poses risk such as collisions and may be illegal in your jurisdiction. Only proceed with caution on roads and road segments where the usage of your vehicle is permitted. The best place to ride your Can-Am ATV is on loose, soft, packed, unpaved surfaces. Try to avoid steep inclines. If you're not careful, you could tip over when you're going up or down hills. When you're driving uphill, you should drive straight uphill. Keep your feet firmly on the footrest with your body weighted forwards. 
Shift your ATV to lower gear and accelerate before you start the climb. Try to keep a steady speed and go easy on the throttle to avoid acceleration. Side hilling is one of the most dangerous types of riding and should be avoided if possible. If you cannot avoid riding on the side of the hill, slow down, lean into the hill, transfer your body weight towards the hill while keeping your feet on the footrest. If you feel the vehicle start to roll over or slide sideways, steer downhill if possible. When riding on snow, stopping distances are lengthened. Apply brakes frequently to prevent ice and snow accumulation and to dry your brake pads and your discs. Now this concludes the important safety information overview that you need to know before you go ride your new Can-Am ATV. For more safety or training information, see your Can-Am dealership or visit our Can-Am website. So get outside, ride, have fun, and be safe. And welcome to the Can-Am family.